Hey everyone, in this video I will show you how to use the TypeScript language in a .NET Core application. TypeScript is a programming language which transpiles to JavaScript. Although it is just a sugarcoating over the original one, but it has type checking and many more features. It is easy to use TypeScript into a .NET Core application, but many developers are still not familiar how to do it. So this video is just for that and I will be using the Node workflow. To do that, we simply need to fetch some node modules and then use them to transpile the TypeScript code into its equivalent JS code. And then finally, we can include this process as an additional step into the application's build process. So first, I am going to tell you in brief what TypeScript actually is. As per Wikipedia, TypeScript is an open source programming language developed and maintained by Microsoft. It is a strict syntactical superset of JavaScript and it adds optional static typing to the language so you can basically turn the static typing on or off depending on your requirements. TypeScript is designed and developed for large applications and it doesn't really make any sense to use it for small applications where type checking is not that much of a big issue. As TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, existing JS programs are also valid TS programs and TypeScript may be used to develop JS applications for both client and server side and on server side it basically runs in the Node.js environment. So let's now get to the code. I will show you the code example how to use the TypeScript files and code into the ASP.NET Core application but before that I would like to ask you to subscribe to this channel if you think you like the video at any point of watching it. This will in turn help me to create more such videos on a regular basis. So the first thing which I am going to do is create a new project which will be the ASP.NET Core web application and I am going to name it .NET Core Oh, you know what let's just go with ts now let's press ok and we just need it to be an empty application we don't need to configure it for https and yep let's press ok now before i begin i am going to tell you about the steps which i'm going to take the typescript files which i'm going to add to this project are going to be transpiled into its equivalent JS version by using the gulp task runner and to use the gulp task runner we will need to fetch some dependencies by using the npm or node package manager and then finally we will run the code to see if it's running perfectly or not so let's just get on to it so first I'm going to add the package.json file so this is going to be a JSON file so let's name it package now we will need to fetch some dependencies and I will show you which ones we need to fetch so first let's create the dependencies object and then we can write the name of the modules which we want to download first one is the gulp and I guess the version should be I don't know let's go with the version 3 I'm not sure if there are any breaking changes in 4 or not and then we will need the um, gulp typescript module to transpile the typescript into equivalent javascript code we can use the 4 version and then finally we will need the dependency for the TypeScript language and the version I guess if I remember correctly is 3.1.1 alright so now the next thing that we need to do is to download these dependencies by right clicking on this package.json file and then clicking on the restore packages menu item this will prompt the Visual Studio to download these dependencies into a node modules folder and you can actually see the folder when you will um, you know select the option to show all files now after this I'm going to add some um, TS files or TypeScript files which um, we want to be converted into the equivalent JS code I'm going to turn this off 
all right so let's add a new folder to it and I'm going to call it scripts now the first item which we need to add to this folder is the um, is a new TypeScript file and I guess it should be over here somewhere maybe in this web folder yep it is over here and I'm just going to name it script.ts now in this script.ts I'm going to paste some code which is um, TypeScript compatible so in this code we are declaring two variables the person's name and age and we are actually defining the type for the person's name and person's age this is not really allowed in JavaScript we cannot define the type but we can do that in TypeScript and then we are setting the values for the name and age variables and then there is a function which is returning the first um, I'm sorry the name and age along with the message and we are going to use this function in the um, in the web page which we will add later so this is the TypeScript code so apart from this TypeScript file, we will also need to add another item which is going to be a JSON file and um, this is going to be called as tsconfig. So tsconfig basically contains the compiler options which will be used when compiling the um, TypeScript code into the JavaScript code. So I'm going to remove all of this because we don't need the basic stuff. I'm just going to add a property called as compiler options and then inside it I'm going to set some properties the first one is the no implicit any and I'm going to tell you about each of them and the second one is going to be the target version I think we can target the ES5 and then finally we can provide the name of the output file let's call it script JS. now this no implicit any option is for those situations when um, we have not provided the type of the variables and when that happens then if this property is set to true then any type is provided to the variables for which types have not been defined and I don't really think that it is a good idea when we are using TypeScript because it actually defeats the whole purpose of using the TypeScript language instead of JavaScript because we mostly use it for its strongly um, typed capabilities which the core JavaScript lacks so let's set it to false for this example although we are not going to use this feature but still I think that this should be added by default in any configuration um, file when we are um, compiling the TypeScript now after this what we need to do is we need to add the um, gulp task runner and for that I'm going to add um, a new item which is going to be a JavaScript file and let's name it gulpfile.js and now in this gulpfile.js I'm going to paste the code for the task which will run to transpile the TypeScript code into the equivalent JS code now in the first line we are actually fetching the references for the gulp and the gulp typescript modules and then we are also um, creating a new object for the um, tsconfig.json file which we have just created so basically this ts project object will be used by this ts module to fetch the information about the compiler options and based on the information which is given in this um, where it is right in this tsconfig.json the output file will be generated and then finally we are setting the default task um, as this scripts task so we can actually include this entire task in the, um, in, the, in the build process of our application so that we will not have to manually run this scripts task again and again to transpile the TypeScript code into the JS code so this is about the Gulp file so now to test it what we can do is we can simply open the task runner explorer and you can see that there are two tasks over here first one is the default and second one is the scripts I'm going to run the default one the default tasks and what it should do is it should 
transpile this ts code into js code and it will um, create a destination file or an output file into another folder which is named as scripts into this www root folder which is the um, folder where all the um, you know files for the uh, for, for the web are placed so let's run the default task and when I'm running it then we can check if the file has been created or not so a new script.js has been created in this um, www root folder so now in this um, in this transpile JS file you can see that this code is actually different from this TypeScript code the type names have gone and the function is also kind of different instead of using this template string the TS module has converted the template string into a normal string concatenation so I guess this should be faster than template string that's why it has been done in any case our goal is now to use this transpiled JavaScript file into an HTML page and for that I'm going to create an HTML file to this www root folder and let's name it index.html so to use this JavaScript file what we need to do is first we need to include the reference of this script and for that I'm going to add the script tag script src equals to script and script.js and that should be it and then finally in the body we can create another script tag which we will use to call this function this get person info function to get this message and we will need to print this message somewhere and for that purpose I'm going to add a div over here with an ID of let's call it message and now in the script we can simply fetch the um, reference of this div and then we can set the text content by using this function get person info and that should be it now this code will still not run because in the startup.cs the um, code is not actually serving this index.html file whenever we will um, navigate to the uh, root path of this application so to fix this I'm going to remove this code and I'm going to add two lines the first one is going to be the use default files and the the second one will be use static files now these two lines will enable the ASP.NET Core application to use the files which we have placed in this um, www root folder to be used instead of um, you know writing something or writing some text content as a default on the um, response which will be sent to the client browser so I think that should be pretty much it for this um, entire example and now let's run the code to see if it's running or not So you can see that the message is being printed over here um, as we have expected Steve Rogers is 128 years old and when I will press F12 and we can actually check the script code which is the um, JS code converted from the TypeScript code and that's how you use a TypeScript file in a ASP.NET Core application. So interestingly this is the exact um, workflow which we can use in a normal asp.net web application too because we are not actually um, utilizing any of the asp.net core features so um, this entire workflow can be ported into many different situations and project types but i just wanted to create a video that this can also be done for dotnet core applications also oh and for the last part i think I need to 
um, set this, um, this task runner to run the default task whenever the um, project will be compiled so that we won't have to um, run the default task again and again whenever we will make any changes to the um, TypeScript file so for that what we can do is we can simply open the task runner explorer and then we can um, click on the task which we want to run as a um, default whenever the project will be built then we can go to the bindings and then um, we can select the after build binding I guess after build is the um, correct thing to do here we can also add the binding for um, project open because um, whenever the project will be fetched from the source control it could be possible that the um, the transpiled JS files are not available in the source control system so it should be a good idea to transpile the TS into JS whenever the project is open for the first time I mean it really depends on your requirements so I'm just going to set the binding for the after build and then when we will open the um, the gulf file.js then you can see that a binding after build attribute has been added so to test it um, I can add um, let's say I don't know another variable let's call it person phone so saving the ts file is not going to uh, run the task we need to build it and when I'm building it then after the build has been finished the task should have run and we can check in the output file so you can see the variable is over here it means that our workflow is running perfectly fine and that's how you use a ts file into a dotnet core application so that's pretty much it for this video guys and i hope that you have liked and understood what i have explained in this video and if you do like the video then please um, place a like and also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so and i will see you in the next one till then have a great day